Mosasaurs were the biggest, nastiest inhabitants of the Cretaceous seas. They had a long, powerful tail to propel themselves towards their prey. They had huge flippers for expertly maneuvering through the water to keep up with their prey. And they had teeth on the roof of their mouths to make sure that prey never escaped. However, it seems that all mosasaurs looked the same. All were big monitor lizard looking things with round flippers and a shark tail. That's what has been traditionally thought anyway. A brand new mosasaur from Japan turns this assumption on its head. Let's meet Megatorygius. Mosasaurs were a quite common part of marine ecosystems throughout the Cretaceous period worldwide. Alongside the dinosaurs and the pterosaurs, mosasaurs are perhaps the most well-known groups of prehistoric Mesozoic beasts. They are often lumped together with the dinosaurs and pterosaurs because of their reptilian-esque visage and because they lived at the same time. However, these massive marine monsters were actually lizards. They quite literally evolved from the group to which lizards and snakes are derived, the Squamata. They are known from fossil deposits worldwide, with thousands of specimens known from North America alone. However, they are rarer across the northwestern Pacific rock layers. Their epicenter across this region is Japan, with some 40 published specimens. Even here though, these Japanese specimens are usually very poorly preserved, often with just bits and pieces of the skull or the body, but rarely both. Historically, none have the flippers preserved, nor the complete spinal column. Mosasaurs swam by what is called axial swimming. By that, I mean that they use the muscles across their trunk and tail to provide most of the thrust for swimming. The skeleton and musculature in the shoulders, pelvis, and limbs were used for controlling their bodies like rudders and stabilizers, adjusting for pitch and roll. On the other end of the spectrum was the other major marine reptile group in Cretaceous seas, the plesiosaurs. They did what is called paraxial swimming. In this case, the major point of thrust was the limbs. Their flippers were comparatively huge, long, and wing-shaped. Their torsos were comparatively short, stout, and robust. These are all generalities, though. There have been some hypotheses about the smaller mosasaur, Plioplaticarpus, suggesting it may have been more adapted for paddling with its flippers or doing something called subaqueous flight. The subaqueous here basically just means that the mosasaur would flap its flippers like wings, except it flies underwater, because lift is generated by the wings or flippers in this case. That being said, mosasaur limbs are often poorly preserved. This is because their flippers are composed of elongated finger bones that contain many more bones than our own fingers. Their hand bones are squashed and made up of a lot of chunks of bone, so once the animal dies, it is common for all of these bones to decay away from the flesh and be carried away from the skeleton by various environmental processes. However, once in a blue moon, a great specimen is found that preserves everything you could ever want to find in a mosasaur. Just such a specimen was recently described by Takuya Konishi, Masaki Ohara, Akahiro Misaki, Hiroshigi Matsuoka, Halley P. Street, and Michael W. Caldwell, with their work published in the Journal of Systematic Paleontology. In 2006, paleontologist Akihiro Misaki collected a mosasaur tail vertebra from the Upper Cretaceous aged Toyajo Formation, outcropping in Wakayama Prefecture, southwestern Japan. The Upper Cretaceous Toyajo Formation of the Sotoizumi Group is distributed around Mount Toyajo, Wakayama, southwestern Japan. This formation is divided into the 700-meter-thick Nakaibara siltstone member, the 590-meter-thick Hasegawa muddy sandstone member, and the 490-meter-thick Buyo sandstone member. Subsequent fieldwork by students and scientists from Kyoto University and the Wakayama Prefectural Museum of Natural History between 2006 and 2011 yielded the most complete mosasaur skeleton to be unearthed in the northwestern Pacific. Following excavation of the specimen in 2011, bones were mechanically prepared out of the hard shale matrix over five consecutive years. 
Prior to the complete removal of the bones from the rock, a cast was made of the entire specimen as originally discovered in the field, with most postcranial bones in articulation. Once prepared out of the matrix, bones were photographed digitally for further description. The specimen, WMNH GE 1140240002, contains almost an entire spinal column from the part that attaches to the skull all the way to the pelvis. Most of the skull only missing bits from the front of the snout, both of the front flippers and some bits of the shoulder girdle, a bunch of ribs, and one of the hind flippers and some of the pelvic girdle. The team decided to name this new mosasaur Megaterygius wakayamaensis, from the ancient Greek megas for large and pterygion for wing, named after the characteristically large wing-shaped flippers of this new mosasaur. The species name simply refers to where the fossils were found. Once the team tallied up all of the characteristics preserved within the skeleton, put them in the computer, and put that into the phylogenetic software of their choice, they found that Megaterygius placed most closely to Plesiotylosaurus and Mosasaurus misuriensis in one analysis, but most closely to Plesiotylosaurus moanosaurus, Rickysaurus, Mosasaurus misuriensis, and Plotosaurus in another. Before we explore what makes this critter so unique, let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to get an idea of just how big it was. Thanks to the well-preserved skeleton and thanks to an understanding of about how big these things are when the tail is included, a piece of Megaterygius that is missing, it's estimated that Megaterygius may have reached 22.6 feet, 6.9 meters in length. This would have made it a medium-sized mosasaur, as the only larger ones were the biggest ones to ever live, like Mosasaurus itself. Thanks, Mr. Man. Megaterygius has two claims to fame. One is that it had absolutely enormous, long, and disproportionate flippers. The other is that it may have had a dorsal fin. Let's tackle the first. The front and hind flippers exceed the skull length, this is a completely unique feature among the mosasaurs. Megaterygius also has hind flippers that are longer than the front ones, a feature only seen in Tylosaurus. The fore flippers of some living whales exceed their respective skull lengths, as in the pilot whale and the humpback whale, but living whales are axial swimmers that lack hind flippers altogether and use their front flippers for stabilization and steering. All mosasaurs are considered axial swimmers, all possessed front and hind flippers, both typically much shorter than the skull in length, although the front flippers in some became almost as long as the skull. Some researchers have found that swimming styles can be predicted based on body, flipper, and fluke anatomy. For example, the humpback whale can be predicted to be speedy and highly maneuverable because it has long and thin or wing-shaped flippers. This shape, size, and proportion are conducive to lift-based maneuvering. Megaterygius and its relative, Plotosaurus, possess very similarly shaped and proportioned wing-like fore and hind flippers that are longer than the skull. When it comes to the extinct marine animals, all of this is still technically speculative. However, the prediction holds true with living whales, so it is more of a situation of likeliness over definite correlation. The bone anatomy of the flippers of Megaterygius suggests high levels of maneuverability, matching the assumptions made of the general anatomy. On top of that, the beast had relatively tall neural spines, and the center, or main part of the backbones, were short from head to butt. This would mean that Megaterygius most likely had a relatively rigid torso. All of this evidence likely means that these bizarre fish lizards were swimming in a completely different way to all other known mosasaurs. They used large, wing-like front flippers for rapid maneuvering, similarly shaped hind flippers for rapid pitch control and or braking, and a crescent-shaped tail fin for acceleratory propulsion and quick turning. The synergy of these anatomical systems would have been adaptations for targeting large numbers of small, evasive prey items, such as schools of small to medium-sized fish, which is what has been found in the gut of Plotosaurus. 
The second most unique feature of Mega Terigius is the possibility of a dorsal fin. Before I get into it, go watch my video on the possibility of Mosasaur dorsal fins to get a good background of the research in this area. In summation, animals that have dorsal fins tend to have evidence for it in their spinal columns, and all known Mosasaurs lack this evidence. The only exception possibly being Plotosaurus, but even that is relatively speculative, not so much for Megaterygius. There is an unexpected change in the orientation of the neural spines along this section of the back vertebrae. This condition is kind of what you see in a lot of delphinoid whales. On dorsal vertebra 15, which is estimated to be the third posterior back vertebra, the neural spine is taller than in the one in front of it because of its more erect orientation. The neural spine of dorsal vertebra 16 is also erect, and from dorsal vertebra 17 to at least dorsal vertebra 21, the neural spines project up and forward. The back vertebrae, from the skull to about the 21st vertebra, were preserved in situ and connected to one another as they were when the animal was alive. Though it's possible that the vertebrae were smooshed around over the process of becoming a fossil, the gradual change in the vertebrae suggests the condition really is natural. In modern whales, similar gradual changes in the orientation of the neural spines occurs within what is called the lumbar region and many dolphins. In dolphins and porpoises, the region of neural spine orientation change corresponds with the base of a prominent dorsal fin. Generally, the dorsal fin in whales occurs after the whale's center of gravity, a crucial position to improve the stability of the whole body for swimming. The aforementioned change in neural spine orientation in Megaterygius occurs after the rib cage, in which the Mosasaur's center of gravity must have been positioned, congruent with the placement of a dorsal fin in living whales. Hence, it is possible that, at least in this Mosasaur species, a dorsal fin was present and provided additional stability during their underwater locomotion. Finally, a Mosasaur dorsal fin is vindicated. It's been attached to Mosasaurs and Peliward for a long time, but it's always been a speculative feature. I always felt that there had to have been more anatomical diversity among the Mosasaurs, considering how long they were around for and how successful they were. The Dalton beasts were worldwide, some even possibly moving into freshwater. I think Megaterygius helps to further prove that there was far more than meets the eye when it came to mosasaurs. They weren't all snaky sea serpent whale lizards. What other forms may be found next? For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.